I think I'm live. It is crazy. I can hear an echo every time I speak, but hopefully you guys can't hear it. Oh, it's so weird. But anyway, so welcome finally to this little video about single and mixed pigments. So I'm going to talk about firstly how to choose the right pigments and also what is important when basically starting out oil painting because when you go to a shop when you're oil painting you are faced with all of these amazing oil paints and it can be so confusing as to which oil paint buys. So what's really great to start with when you're laying out your palette is to really consider buying single pigments and I'll go through the reasons why and the advantages of single pigments and mixed pigments, also what they are as well. And then you can hopefully make an informed decision as to which paints you want to buy. So here I am coming to you in less than HD quality. I don't know what this quality video would be described as, possibly like one pixel or something. <laughs> I did have, I do have um, a live stream feature on my phone. But every time in the past, whenever I've used it for some reason, um, it actually records vert no, yes, vertically. So I'm literally recording in like a single panel thing. I know people find that extremely annoying. Like I remember last time when I live streamed, I got so many people on my live stream saying, turn your camera around, it's so annoying. But for some reason, it's just stuck in that thing. And there is an app that moves it, changes it around. But I thought, oh, I just used my webcam on my laptop, which again was a huge mistake because it's so old and such. So now I'm going to be a mad doctor because I always feel like a mad scientist or something when I put this really weird rubber and love on. So I'm going to talk to you about these pigments and non toxic issues. I prefer not to kind of get paint all over my hands when I'm So the way to find out what pigments are in your oil paints. Now, if you're in a shop, what you have to do is take your oil paints like so, and it will be either on the back or on the side. In this case, it's on the side. I don't know if you can see here. I'm going to hold it up to the light. Um, I'm not sure if you can see, but along here, we have a number. So there will be a letter. There will be a P something. P something and then a number. So in this case, you've got PY129, and that's the pigment for green gold, which you can see here. And this is a single pigment oil paint. And now I'm going to show you a mixed pigment. So a single pigment will have one number on it. So that's how you know it's a single pigment. Now here we have a mixed pigment. So this is uh, a color called Sap Green. Now I haven't reviewed this on my channel yet, but a lot of artists um, really like this color because it is really great for landscape. So um, if you're painting beautiful trees, love the grass, things like that. So this is in fact a mixed pigment. So when you turn your color to the side or to the back, which is always, you will see that it has a number of different numbers on there. So in this case, you have PY95, you also have PG7, and you also have PBL7. So that is what makes up this color. And this official name is Sap Green Lake Extra. So what is the difference between these two, this single pigment and this mixed pigment? So basically what it means is when you have a single pigment, that is one color in your oil paint. When you have a mixed pigment, you have a number of different colors, in this case, three different colors in your oil paint. So why is this important? Like, who cares after all? Does it really matter? You know, what is in your oil paint? You know, what pigment is it that you have? Um, does it really make a difference? Well, it does in a way because if you think about it, if you're trying to color mix, so say for example, if you're trying to make a green, you have yellow and you have blue oil paint. But say within those oil paints, say the yellow has been mixed with a number of different colors inside, and then you have the blue that's been mixed with a number of different colors in, inside within it. When you mix those two colors together, you're mixing multiple colors together. And sometimes this can create a, a more muddy color. So when you have two single pigments, you have a single pigment yellow and a single pigment blue, then you, say you have cadmium yellow and you have ultramarine blue, so just two single pigments, 
mix them together, you've got a very clean colour. Understand the properties of you know how, you, how they work. And so that can create a more clean mix. And also an advantage to this because when you have a mixed colour like this, this could be a mixture of different colours, some may be opaque and some may be transparent. Whereas when you're mixing a single pigment, something like green gold, green gold is a transparent colour. So you already know the properties of it. It's not it's difficult for you to understand how it works. So say if you are wanting to glaze, you just grab this colour and think, this is a really great colour to glaze. It's transparent. I know how it works. You go for it. Whereas this one, you may be thinking, I'm not entirely sure if this is good for glazing. It may have a different feel to it than other transparent colours. You may not even know if it's transparent or not. It could be semi-transparent because it's a mixture of different colours and could be a little bit more difficult to work with. For some reason, I find myself usually gravitating towards single pigment colours. Uh, this is a colour I've had for a while and I haven't actually used it very much. So that's the advantage of having a single pigment. You know how they're going to operate. And if you're starting out as an artist, I highly recommend basically buying single pigments as much as you can. Now, when do you think you would need mixed pigments? This is where it comes into a sort of interesting area. Because say you have exclusively single pigments, but you really love a colour and you're always mixing it on your palette and it's so boring to mix it over and over again. And it can be something quite difficult to mix, like turquoise, for example. The turquoise is a beautiful colour, but it's very difficult to, it's not difficult, time consuming to mix three or four colours on your palette to mix together to create turquoise. So a big advantage, but in that case, to go out and buy a turquoise because then you will be saving yourself time. You quickly grab your turquoise when you want to take those beautiful seeds and you don't need to worry too much about mixing it yourself each time. Now with a green like this, for example, um, I could easily mix this because with several, um, two actually, single pigments that I have. I can use Indian yellow mixed with viridian and actually this doesn't quite, it's not the exact same colour, but it's very similar. And I always had those colours colors on my palette anyway. So I find that it's just so much easier for me to just go, right, just quickly mix that up. And that's a two pigment colour that I've created as opposed to uh, just buying a pre-mixed colour, which is not really necessary. So it's a great advantage to really look into getting single pigments initially and then buying the odd mixed pigment. Now that that is absolutely nothing wrong with, if, I have no idea what that is. <laughs> it's not a bug. It's some kind of, there's all kinds of things floating around in it. Um, so there's nothing wrong with, um, you know, using mixed pigment at all, if that's something that you prefer. But I do believe that colour mixing, single pigment, is the easiest and definitely the most cost effective way to go when you're starting out. What's really great is you can get a few key colours, so single pigment between that thing is like cadmium. I mean, I don't use cadmium, but <laughs> it's kind of a silly thing to start with. I don't use them, but let's start off with titanium white. Mars is black, which is the black that I simply adore. Please be careful though that titanium white in many brands is quite often mixed with this white and um, you know, big white is a more transparent white. So just be careful of that. Um, you, know, you have to go to each brand, look at the spec on their website, and in the spec, it would show you which pigment you need on there if you can't get to a shop or if you're buying online. Because most people buy their tapes online now. And so then you want to look at the spec and then see what pigment number is on there. So then, you will be able to determine whether it's a single pigment or not. So, uh, as I would say, uh, uh, a suggested palette would be things like titanium white, Mars black, um, cadmium yellow. I'm going to say cadmium yellow for now because even though I don't use it, uh, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, maybe cadmium orange, uh, then um, something like ultramarine blue, magenta. Um, 
Prussian blue, if you can get it. Sometimes Prussian blue has other, maybe a black mixture or some other color. But you can get it single pigment, so Prussian blue. Um, Viridian. Green gold. Uh, Indian yellow. So, so that's sort of uh, a dioxazine purple. There we go. So those are all single pigments that are really popular. And once you have that number of colours, you're really looking at a really full palette. So you won't need to worry so much about buying lots and lots of colours because it's so intimidating when you look at the go to shops and you see multiple colours available. And I feel like when I started out, it's so drawn to that like colours and things, but actually they're so easy to mix yourself, um, so it's really necessary to go around buying you know, all these different colours. It's only if you paint, if you paint you know, in particular colours all the time, then of course, you have a very limited palette, then of course you might want to think about investing in them, but um, it's really not necessary to go out and buy you know, a ton of colours that stray from the sort of simple palettes of ideas. So, I really do hope that this is sort of helpful. It's such a difficult conundrum when you're buying paint and it's hard to know what to invest in and which paints are good and which colours that you can go for. But really, the effect on the website is your best friend because that's when you can really investigate what is in your paint um, because it's not just. Uh, a case of looking at the colour, which is what beginners always do, which is what I do when I was a bit down, I take this off because it makes my hand like smells or something, um, which is what I did when I started out. Um, it's what beginners tend to do, but um, it's not actually the best way to just look at the colour. In this respect, it will also show you things like what the binder is, and again, that's really, really important. So, we probably want to look at oil for example and this is all this great because it's a really strong binder so water isn't it so disappointing I should have got tea now I'm thinking about it but it's too late to tea because it's nearly 10 30 it's just crazy I was supposed to live earlier but I couldn't even get this thing working so um I feel like my laptop is in the space and breaking down right now um so linseed oil is the strongest, considered as one of the strongest oils as a binder in oil paint, just in terms of longevity. So if you use linseed oil as a binder in your paint, um, chances of your painting lasting a really long time without you know, sort of really cracking everywhere is really high because it has a it's a really strong oil. Um, the only uh, the reason why people are trepidatious about using something like linseed oil is because it has or can have a tendency to yellow. If you basically blah, 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 if you basically place your oil painting in a really dark and brown, now this is of course not the, the best idea, but not everyone has you know beautiful open air studios. I know I don't. Open air. Uh, yes, with lots of air, with lots of light, with lots of light. Some of us, you know, have to work in a basement or I know where I keep my painting. Um, I keep, there is a, you know, big significant window, but I am uh, constantly moving them around to make sure that they aren't stuck to the dark and cool. But um, if, you, if you put all your paintings that have the easy or binder in them, sometimes um, if they're darker or they're yellow. And so, so there's that unfortunate possibility. However, I still think that the advantage of using the oil in your oil quantities is far greater than any other binder. But if you are concerned about that, you may want to look in other oil paints. Now, why not walnut? Walnut, I don't speak to be. Walnut oil, walnut, walnut oil is a great binder for oil paint 
So that's a good consideration if you're looking for an alternative to linseed oil. And I have used all that oil binding paint before. Is that fair to say dramatically? I'm not really sure. Walnut oil binded paint? Uh, paint with a walnut oil binder? I'm not sure. Um, when you're talking about art, it's so funny because there's so many words that don't necessarily fit in a proper sort of, they don't fit in, in the English language and you have to just make up your own sort of sentence structure. So, yes, and the only problem I have with all that oil is I do really like it as a medium, but I find that the oil paints usually have a very funny smell and it's a smell that I have, I'm quite sensitive to odours. Possibly just has, um, I should be slightly allergic to things, and I think that more that oil is a little bit too strong a scent for me. If I paint more often, I try not to use the oil paint or the, the mediums that have a really strong scent. So that's my only slight misgiving for warm that oil. And then you also have safflower oil and poppy oil. I would say the safflower oil and poppy oil are great for lighter colours because they won't darken, they won't be yellow. So if you're somebody who has a really light palette, if you're somebody who paints really fresh scenes, fresh portraits, landscapes, whatever, and you use a lot of white, you might want to consider using sasa oil or poppy oil as the binder because it's going to make your uh, lighter colours and you know, really, really bright. I used to use the white in this brand block and they actually use poppy oil as a binder in the oil paint. And it does make the white extremely luminous and bright, and I always used to really like using that colour as a sort of highlight. Um, I suppose, you know, painting the moon and things like that instead of having an amazing goddo. Um, so, yeah, that's a really good consideration. And um, in terms of oil paint, block is one that I know uses um, poppy oil in many of its. Uh, I think many of its colours, but some of its colours also use safflower oil as well. I think. No, linseed oil. <laughs> Blocks uses linseed oil for the earth colours, I think, um, if I can remember correctly, because I did actually purchase them quite a while ago. Um, but yeah, so it's a great brand, actually. It's super, it's the only thing that's super expensive. And I found that brands that use poppy oil as the binder, apologies about the sentence structure, uh, they tend to be expensive, so it's not as common a an oil that's used, but it, it's a really nice binder. It tends to make the paint quite fluid, so when you start painting with um, those types of paints, they just seem to flow, which is nice, sort of a big, nice flow. Um, but uh, as I say, because I'm sort of married to I'm devoted to, I think that's a better word, devoted to linseed oil. Um, I just tend to stick with it. But I have tried other paints. I have delved into the other paint world, the world of other paints and other binders. And um, I would say I'm pretty devoted to Old Holland now. Um, but things can change, you know, because... Um, I'm ever always trying out new products. I don't tend to, I, I mean, I never buy full range of sets because I think it's quite a mistake. I think I started out buying sets when I was beginning, but I find that it's always, um, it's very often been a bad idea because I wanted to then change to other paint brands and then really regret it buying a set, buying sets, buying sets. Set. That's what I said. Um, I tell you, the biggest mistake I made was buying a big set of Windsor and Newton paints when I started out. And um, that was a big mistake because those paints, I just can't stand the smell. And the thing is, they are actually really good in terms of pigmentation. I find that their pigmentation is really strong. It's really, really vivid and some of their lighter colours like the white and um, I find their yellow to be extremely strong and intense and red as well but um, just 
smell is just unbearable. And actually, whenever I go into a an art class and they have wind and they use wind removing paint, I know straight away because I can smell it quite a distinctive scent that I went to do a where they've used wind removing paint. I'm like, you've used wind removing paint. Oh my god, I hate the smell. <laughs> but they are a great paint brand in terms of their paint. I have a painting that um, I have quite a few paintings so I did when I started off using the Zoom and it all lasted really well. They kept their brightness actually, they still really vivid and bright and pretty incredible. So they are great paint in terms of performance, but the smell is not my cup of tea. So that's pretty much like my my thoughts on pigment, single pigment, mixed pigment. Please let me know what you think about um, single pigment, mixed ones. I, I'm not entirely sure what the situation is with other paints, like watercolours or acrylic, but this is just a situation that I find to be very prevalent in oil paint. So all I would say as a sort of final recap is Create your palette around single pigments and then any other colours you are just drawn to or that you find a pain to mix, then of course, gradually go for the mixed ones. But it, when you start creating your palette, the basic, you know, 10, 12 colours, if they're single pigments, you'll get amazing, amazing, clean, incredible mixes. You'll find painting is so fun because every time you mix your paints you're not ending up with like nasty muddy colours and it will make painting an absolute dream. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry it has some teething problems but hopefully it's the start of something great because now I have actually got my webcam working. It's quality is so poor. Like I can see my face but that's about as good as it gets, you know, it's just terrible. But anyway,